My Friend Irma. Created by Cy Howard, transcribed from Hollywood, and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. <laughs> wonderful world we're living in. Four hours by plane and you're basking on the sands of Miami Beach. A few hours more and you're sitting by a pool in Bermuda looking across the Mediterranean from the Riviera. Ah, yes, if you have money, you can enjoy any climate you desire. So, here we are, Irma and I, lying on our fire escape and the Martin kid is squirting a hose at us. (laughs) But it's home and we love it. We grit our teeth, close our eyes, and we love it. Oh, it's certainly warm for April, isn't it, Jane? Yeah. Just feel that sun beating down. How could it throw off so much heat? Tiny little ball like that. Irma, for your information, that little ball is a million times as large as the Earth. Jane, I think you better go in. I think you've been under that ball too long. (laughs) Irma, will you just relax? All right. My, the view is beautiful from here. Look at all the wash hanging on the clotheslines today. Yeah. Ah, the stories they tell. What do you mean? Well, you know, you could almost judge people by their clotheslines. For instance, take the Freedman's wash over there in the courtyard. Look how little Milton's pants are all worn off at the knees. (laughs) That's because he's always playing marbles. Yes, I guess you're right, Jane. Hey, and look at little Bobby's shirt. It's worn off at the elbows. That's because he's always leaning on them when he watches TV. (laughs) Yeah. Look at where Mr. Friedman's pants are worn off. Yeah. (laughs) I understand he has a desk job. Yeah. (laughs) Golly, it's warm out here. Maybe we better put on our bathing suits and take a real sun bath. Nothing doing. Why not? Because I refuse to be seen with you in public wearing that bathing suit. Looks like the moths got at it and left with the biggest half. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've told you a million times the purpose of a bathing suit is to allow your body to breathe, but the one you bought makes everybody gasp. <laughs> yes, but I feel safe in that suit. What do you mean, safe? Well, the moment I get in the ocean, a lifeguard comes to my rescue. Yeah. Do you know I've been saved when I've been ten feet from the water? (laughs) Yeah, I know. Irma, just read your book, huh? Do you mind if I read it aloud? It helps me follow the plot. No, go right ahead. Um, John and Mary were married in 1940, and during these 12 years of monotony, they had eight children. (laughs) Monotony? Where does it say that? Right there. That's matrimony. (laughs) It's funny, it made sense the other way, too. (laughs) Read. So in these 12 years, John and Mary came to know the full meaning of the words cannonballs. Cannonballs? Yeah, right here. That's connubial bliss. There are ten. Hey, we've got company. We better go in, huh? Let's go in. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hi, Al. <laughs> Hello, Al, honey. How's my hard-working man? How are things down at the garage? Garage? I quit that job yesterday. Didn't you know? You quit your job, Al? You only had it a week. So what? I ain't trying to establish a record. <laughs> And besides, I found out that working in a garage was getting too dangerous. Too many women drivers. What's wrong with women drivers? What's wrong with them? When they stick their hand out, you don't know whether they want to turn left, turn right, back up, or just dry their nail polish. (laughs) So I got a new job. Skywriting. Oh, Al, that's too dangerous. Not for me. I'm the co-pilot. If that plane crashes, it's the pilot who gets fired. I tell you, chicken, it's an exciting business, but you never know what's going to happen. What do you mean? Well, the weather can ruin you. Take yesterday. We wrote, diet with Ferguson's formula, and the wind blew away the tea. Didn't read well. Die with Ferguson's formula. (laughs) Al, 
Well, does this business pay well? Oh, sure, Jane, and it looks steady. And besides, I've been promised a raise. A raise, Al? That's right, Chicken. Who knows what one of these days you and I may be up in that plane. And you know what message I'll be writing, Poopsie? What, Poopsie? Just married. Oh, Al, not way up there. We won't get any gifts. <laughs> Come in. <coughs> Why, hello, Mrs. Martin. What brings you here? My husband threw me out. Why? What happened? Well, I asked Irma to drop off the laundry. I told her I wanted the shirt starched, buttons put on the pajamas, and the sheets washed and ironed. Well? She had the pajamas starched and buttons put on the sheets. <laughs> buttons on the sheets? Yeah. All night, my husband kept dreaming he was sleeping on a typewriter. <laughs> oh, he's in a mean mood. Well, he doesn't know, Irma. Come on, I'll go on down with you and I'll explain. Now, how do you suppose the laundry man could have made a mistake like that? Chicken, how could you do such a thing? I... I didn't mean to, Al. I guess so, but I'm a little worried. Worried? Yeah. When I was unemployed and not getting anywhere, well, you were the right kind of girl for me. But now that I'm on my way to success, well, I... I gotta be a little more careful. Al, do you think I'm stupid? Well, no, Chicken, I don't think of you as being stupid. It's just that you're bright in an ignorant way. <laughs> and, well, I think we've reached a point where unless you improve your mind, we may have to call it quits. But, Al, I've tried to improve my mind. Remember that memory course I took? Yeah. How come you never kept on with it? I forgot the address of the school. <laughs> oh, it's no use, Chicken. I'm sorry. My career is too important. Oh, it's true that I love you. But remember, love is blind. And as long as I ain't looking... I might stumble on another dame as pretty as you, but with brains. So it's up to you what happens with our future. Farewell, chicken. <laughs> Come in. If you don't mind, it's me, Maestro Wanderkim. Well, my darling, why are you crying? Did you lose something? Oh, Maestro, I may lose Al. I don't know what to do. Oh, it's very simple. Don't look. <laughs> Maestro, don't say things like that. I love Al, and now he's talking about giving me up because I'm... I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm a darling. You're not stupid. I'm not? No, no. You heard the old expression, young in heart. You just happen to be young in head. <laughs> Hello, Maestro. Irma, where's Al? He's gone. Jenny says if I don't improve my mind, he's going to give me up. Why, that no good. Now, please, Jane, I love Al. To me, he's everything. He's the air I breathe. He's the sun that shines. That's Al, all right. Hot air. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Desert me when I need help so badly. Oh, now, Cookie. Now, wait a minute. What do you want me to do, honey? I'm willing to try anything within reason. Help me to improve my mind. Wait a minute. I said within reason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she shouldn't be allowed to sing that song. It's cruelty to animals. <laughs> Hello, girls. Oh, there you are, maestro. Mm. Well, how do you like the way I hit them high notes? Hit them? You sound more like you were beating them to death. <laughs> Is that so? Well, I'll have you know I... Oh, Irma, darling, you've been crying. Well, she's a little upset, Mrs. O'Reilly. Al told her if she doesn't improve her mind, he's through with her. Now, Irma, darling, don't let it worry you. Although men don't admit it, it's not brains they care about in a woman. It's our figures they whistle at. Hmm. <laughs> Things have been awfully quiet, haven't they, Mrs. O'Reilly? <laughs> Just 
like your cousin, Professor Kropotkin, always insulting me in public. But when we're alone, it's different. Why, last night in the movie, you held me hand all through the picture. I had to, otherwise you'd eat all my popcorn. <laughs> with my problem. Hasn't anyone got any suggestions? Well, I'd like to help you, Irma, dear, but what can I suggest to you that hasn't been tried? Uh, did that correspondence course you took last year help any? No, the mailman always left before I could ask him any questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, what about a private tutor? I had one two years ago. Irma, going around with a cornet player is not considered having a private tutor. <laughs> Night school, Herbert, darling. Well, I went to night school. Yeah, did it help? Well, it made me smart in the evening, but by the time I got to work the next day, I'd slept it off. <laughs> well, I think this whole attitude of Al's is unforgivable. You were good enough for him when he was a penniless moocher, and now that he's working, all of a sudden he wants Madame Curie. I'd be darned if I would change for any man. Now, if you don't mind, I'm leaving. Where are you going, Jane? I'm getting an upsweep. Richard thinks I'll look very cute in it. <laughs> Bye. You see, she's changing. Well, I'll give you my word, I wouldn't. Any man that wants me takes me the way I am. <laughs> this is the most unattractive giveaway program I've ever listened to. But, Emma, darling, I, I think in this case the girls are right. Just stay as sweet as you are. I can't. This is a crisis in my life. If Al wants a girl with brains, I'll find a way to get brains, even if it drives me out of my mind. It's been over an hour now since Irma left here to find a way to improve her mind. I wish her luck. I'll say one thing for Irma. She's leaving no stone unturned. I just found a copy of a letter she's sending to Einstein. Listen to this. Dear Professor Einstein, since you are the most brilliant man in the world, I thought if we could correspond, it might be mutually profitable. <laughs> You could write me everything you know, and I could write you everything I know. Please send your stuff airmail, as I am a fast thinker. <laughs> Concerning your theory of relativity, I've always liked it, as I think families should stick together. Oh. <laughs> well, at least the girl's trying, J.D. Yeah, that's just the trouble, Mrs. O'Reilly. This girl can get into trouble without trying. Imagine what she gets into when she makes a special effort. But where do you suppose she is now? She phoned me she had to go to the office. Mr. Clyde had some extra work for her to do. Well, Janie, at least you know what she's up to. Yeah, it's more than Mr. Clyde will know. <laughs> Miss Peterson, come into my office a minute, please. The mind can be compared to a complex machine which is capable of many functions. Miss Peterson, uh, didn't you hear me calling you? Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, I just bought a book on how to improve my mind, and I'm reading it. Well, isn't that nice? What is it called? The Art of Removing Rocks from the Head? <laughs> It says the brain is a complex machine. Oh, well, then you better wire General Motors to send over their entire repair crew. <laughs> Why, is something wrong? I'll say there's something wrong. That letter I dictated to you yesterday, I just ran across the carbon copy. Letter? Yes, yes. I said I haven't been able to get the deposition as yet concerning your wife's suit on such short notice, but I expect to get some action in the future. Well, that's simple enough, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Would you care to read the letter you sent? All right. Be my guest. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to get your wife deported as she is wearing a suit. If they notice her in shorts, I can get action. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I made a mistake. Uh, I made the mistake the minute I hired you. Well, that was the old Irma Peterson. The new Irma is improving her mind. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Now, if one of you isn't too busy, will you go down to Western Union and send this wire? 
What's more? Milton. Uh, oh, in here, dear. Oh, there you are. Oh, hello, Mrs. Clyde. Hello, Irma. How are you? Fine. How do you feel? Sharp as a blade. Sharp as a blade. Now I know why Mr. Clyde always says it. Says what? That he has to go home to the old battle axe. <laughs> Hey, Miss Peterson, will you go on to Western Union? I've already left. Bye. Milton. Yes, dear? Uh, do you say that? <laughs> of course not, my dear. You know that girl's out of her mind. Well, why don't you fire her? Uh, well, I'm waiting until my birthday. I want to give myself a present. <laughs> Uh, what brings you here, my pet? Well, I just couldn't tell you over the phone. I know how anxious you've been about the appointment. Oh. Uh, here's the wire of confirmation from Washington. Oh, George, it finally did come. My appointment to serve on the draft board. Well, let me see it, dear. Here it is, Milton. Yeah, it's quite a feather in my cap. Milton J. Clyde, you are hereby officially asked to serve. <laughs> Signed, J. Henderson, Secretary of the Draft Board. Well, as long as I'm downtown, I think I'll do some shopping. Well, wait, dear. I'll take it to lunch first. Well, aren't you being examined for your new insurance policy today? Oh, yes. I'll be back in time. Dr. Wilkins won't be up here till 1.30. Very well. Uh, oh, do you think you'll pass? I better. I've been waiting a long time to get this additional insurance. Oh, you know, our own doctor says I'm in perfect condition. Of course, my nerves aren't too well, but Miss Peterson said she's trying to improve her mind, so maybe things will get a little better. <laughs> Shall we go? Aren't you going to wear your hat? Uh, no, Irma was filling the inkwell. She filled that, too. <laughs> Mr. Clyde's out. What's this? You are hereby officially asked to serve draft board. Gee, they're drafting Mr. Clyde? They must have run out of men. <laughs> Can't let them do this to my boss. Now that my mind is improving, I must put it to good use. Oh, pardon me, miss. Uh, yes? Would you mind telling Mr. Clyde that Dr. Wilkins is here to give him his physical examination? Already? Uh, you mean uh, he hasn't been passed yet? No, of course not. Oh, thank goodness. Why? Well, uh, um, that is, he isn't in, but I can tell you all about his condition. I'm his secretary. Oh, well, I'm afraid that would be hearsay. Of course it's hearsay. I'm here and I'm saying it. <laughs> you don't understand, miss. We cannot accept him if he isn't physically qualified. You can't? <laughs> Well, take it from me, Mr. Clyde is a very sick man. He is? Oh, yes. You know, last year they took out his appendix. Oh, was it infected? No, he just didn't have the strength to support it. <laughs> but he told me on the phone that he's in perfect condition. Well, I couldn't hear what he was saying. I was holding him up. <laughs> oh, of course, now, I don't want you to repeat any of this to him. <laughs> don't worry, I won't, because I'm leaving this very instant. I always say, if you want to learn about a man, talk to his secretary. Boy, this book has already made me think clear. Wait till I tell Al the progress I've made. Hello, Miss Peterson. Any calls? Oh, don't worry about anything. Well, why should I worry? This has been a wonderful day for me. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And don't worry about you being drafted. Drafted? What are you talking about? Oh, the new Irm Peterson is a wide-awake secretary. And when this Dr. Wilkins came in to examine you, I laid it on. I told him you were practically half dead. You did? Yes. Well, uh, you better get him back. Why? Because somebody here is going to be all dead. <laughs> Who? The new Irma Peterson. <laughs> After what Irma did to Mr. Clyde and all that we've told her, that she would give up trying to improve her mind. But no, not Irma. This kid keeps fighting until it kills you. You know what she's done now? She's taken up yogi. <laughs> That's right, yogi. There she sits on the floor with her legs crossed in the corner of our living room. She doesn't move, she doesn't speak. She just sits there, staring into space. Look at her. 
Miss O'Reilly, what am I going to do? Oh, I don't know. I've told her that Richard's mother's coming over to discuss the charity luncheon with me, but I can't get her to move. She just sits there and stares. I sweep around her. <gasps> what is that? Her breathing exercises, Maestro. In yogi, they say if you breathe deeply, all the poisons leave your system and you can think clearly. Ah, is it working? Well, she seems to have a clearer head. You can see the air go in her ears and out her nose. <laughs> Irma Peterson, you get up. Now, right this minute, or I don't know... Uh, uh, Janie, don't, don't get angry. After all, the girl is desperate. You know what Al told her. What do I care what Al told her? I'm entitled to live, too. The mother of the most important guy I know is coming here, and I'm tired of apologizing for my roommate. (gasps) There she goes inhaling again. At least if she'd bend over, she could vacuum the rugs. (laughs) Janie, control yourself. Why don't you take that Japanese screen and put it in front of her? Then Mrs. Rhinelander won't see her. Gee, you know, I didn't think of that. Maybe that can save me an awful lot of explaining. Thanks, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, don't mention it. Come on, maestro, let's go up on the roof. It's spring, and we can watch the birds building their nests. (laughs) Maybe that'll give you some ideas. Mm, Yes, yes, I could steal some straw for my mattress. (laughs) Good luck, Janie. Thanks. Now, look, Irma, don't you say a word, not a single word. Mrs. Rhinelander won't be here long, and if you embarrass me, so help me, I'll... Come in. Hello, Jane. Hello, Mrs. Rhinelander. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Jane, I can't tell you how wonderful it is of you to volunteer to do this work for our charity every year. Oh, it's my pleasure. My, your apartment looks darling. What an attractive Japanese screen. Thank you. Why, that painting of Mount Fujiyama is so realistic. Yes, yes. Now, about the luncheon. (gasps) Well, what is that? What? That sound from that screen. Maybe Fujiyama is erupting. I mean, no. (laughs) No, I I really didn't hear anything. Now, about the luncheon. Uh, Jane, how long have you had that screen? Oh, I don't know, Miss Rhino. It's really nothing. Is it a signed piece? No, no, I'm sure it is. Well, maybe it's signed on the back. Uh, Don't don't go near there. Uh, Well, why? Uh, 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 There's a curse on it. Uh, uh, It's it's the Hope Diamond of Tokyo. Well, all right. (laughs) (gasps) Oh, my goodness, there it goes again. It's coming from behind that screen. And my curiosity... I, I think the radiator is hissing. Why, Jane, it's Irma. Oh, Mrs. Rhinelander, it is Irma, and I'm so tired of making excuses. You might just as well know Irma is now a yogi, and all I can say, Mrs. Rhinelander, is that if there is any way that we could possibly... Mrs. Rhinelander, what are you doing on your knees? I want to commune with Irma. I'm a yogi, too. (laughs) You are? Well, move over. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a fourth. 